joining us today. I think we have a very important uh, statement we want to make in this uh, cable chatter. I think we have some very important information for you, so make sure you pay attention. Share this out there if you're on Facebook, YouTube. Make sure you share this video uh, out there or on live stream to make sure that everyone can see this. Today, my guest is Mr. Chris Shaneyfelt. He is the director of the Randolph County Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Welcome, Chris. Hey, thank you, Nick. It's good to have you here today, and I know that Lately, we're at the uh, February we're for February fourth when we're taping this, mm -hmm. and we're going to be airing this for the next uh, month or so uh, about the information you're going to be talking about. But here, February fourth today, we're seeing a lot of uh, of snow already coming down, and even the past month in January, uh, you've been quite busy, haven't you? I, I, I've been very busy, along with the other emergency service people that uh, assist us. Okay, so tell us a little about the position you're in as uh, not only Director of Homeland Security, but the Combined Emergency Management Agency for Randolph County. Okay, uh, what I do is I am uh, primarily Emergency Manager more than Homeland Security. Um, emergency Management deals more with the disasters, um, mitigation, preparation, responding to, recovering from any type of man-made or natural uh, event. Um, with that, you know, you work basically as a liaison with the emergency responders in the local units of government to help them recover or prepare for these events. Um, so if there's a, an event like we have the snowstorm that's coming today where we're projected to get 12 inches of snow, yeah. I'll deal with the, the, the town governments and the mayors making sure that you know they're doing okay with their plowing and stuff. If we need to make disaster declarations, we can. Um, if we lose power and we need to set shelters, um, we can do that as well. Um, so th that type of work is what falls into my preview. The Homeland Security stuff is there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I deal with it, but, you know, in our neck of the woods, it's just not that big of a deal. But there are terrorism alerts that we push out to the emergency services people. If there are things that are life-threatening to them, uh, whether it's some kind of new uh, meth lab or it may be, um, some type of new bomb that's being made, and then we'll push that out to them so that they're aware of the, the new stuff that's going on. And I think, you know, and just what you said, being a liaison, mm -hmm. in so many ways, I think if we have an informed community, the community being Randolph County as a whole and Eastern Central Indiana, West Central Ohio, if we're an informed community about not only disasters, but in, including what you said about terrorism, man-made uh, uh, disasters that can be happening. Uh, an informed community is a safe one. And uh, having that information, if, wouldn't it be nice if I just had one place that I could get all my information from when it comes to or pertains to uh, one aspect of my life, and one in this case, my safety and my mm -hmm. family's safety. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if I want to be informed on all of the all of the different homeland security and emergency management. Um, uh, Warnings, watches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What's the best way for me to get informed? The primary way that I push things out is, is through the Facebook page. Okay. Uh, my department has a Facebook page, and it's at Randolph uh, Homeland Security and Emergency Management. So, okay. if people know how to search through Facebook, they can do that, or you can post a link for them. Um, yep. We 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 do that. I'm on it constantly. Um, I not only help people that. Are in Randolph County, but there's a lot of people that are in Dark County that seek information from us. Uh, there's a, a group of people that live up in northern Indiana that get information from us that I know specifically. So um, it's just not Randolph County, but we as emergency managers will just push out the information, and, and there's a lot of people that are using it. Um, then the other way that I tend to push out a lot of information is through Nixle, which is a website that pushes out uh, law enforcement or government type. Uh, um, alerts. Yeah, and you can get Nixle. I know I've got it on my cell phone, and I've also got it routed to my email primarily. I, I like it in the text message form because I'll be out and about somewhere, and, and I'll get this weather alert, uh, something that may be pertaining to I-70 or I-60, uh, 65 or 69, um, being closed, and you might say, well, if I'm in Randolph County, that may not mean make too much of a difference, but if I'm going to travel to Indy, mm -hmm. now it does make a difference for right. me. Now it does pertain particularly to my travel arrangements. So uh, so how do I get a um, maybe attached to the Nixle system? Okay, Nixle has its own webpage, and it's at nixle.com. It's N-I-X-L-E.com. Mm -hmm. And you, you go in and you enter in your demographics, which is your phone, your email, your address, 
and then you can set up your account basically how you want to, whether you're just receiving the severest of information or you can receive clear down to the community alerts. Yeah. Say if uh, there's a lost child and we yeah. push out a community level alert for that. And like you said, you know, in Randolph County, that's that's not so bad. And you can get the information here. But the thing with Nixle is, is if you're going on vacation or you do a lot of traveling around Indiana, then you can get that information. And it's you can make it customizable to your specifics of where you're going and stuff like that. So it's not just Randolph County information. So yeah, best way, go to nixel.com, enter in your information. Um, you know, you get create a username and account. It's mm -hmm. free, you know, mm -hmm. username and password. Um, just set it up. You can log back in every once in a while to change those settings. Maybe I'm getting uh, too many silver alerts. Sometimes I've gotten those on my phone. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal, but uh, maybe you don't want to receive those. You can say, you know, I really don't uh, need those, but I really do want to know when a weather event's hitting, so right. might be able to set it up that way. Uh, look uh, Randolph County Emergency Management up on Facebook. Uh, definitely get attached to that, follow them and all of their feeds. We at KISS TV uh, try to make sure that we share that information. I, I'd encourage people when they see those posts to share it on their own page too so that mm -hmm. that information not only um, you know is is seen on their own profile but someone else might see it, it shares it, and that information goes viral so that no one's with we're without excuse now right. to say we don't know if there's a travel advisory right yeah. well we're getting into that computer age and, and we've been there for a while that even with the, the way the science is and the computers are assisting the meteorologists if you're not in the know a few days out then you're just you know, i guess what they call off the grid so yeah um you're just not getting the information at all because these are pushed out several days in advance anymore. Absolutely, yeah, and and, and uh, even just the expectation of it, that's that's always uh, a good thing to have. Better be uh, safe than sorry, mm -hmm. better to have uh, an event that might be uh, saying the sky's going to fall and it not fall, Right. and be informed and be ready, expect the worst, get, get right. something better anyways, yeah, so expecting the worst that way, and so um, being prepared for those kinds of things. So um, we might have watches, warnings, travel of those uh, wind chill or winter advisories mm -hmm. uh, and watches and warnings. Tell us maybe the difference, the, the nutshell difference between all of those, and kind of explain when it comes to travel advisory, why we don't just go with a one, two, three level, because mm -hmm. I've had that question asked to me too in the past. Okay, well, let's start off with the, the, the travel stuff. Sure. And the travel map. Um, Indiana Code was modified a few years ago because of varying counties having their own system. Yeah. So, you know, why, what may have been a one, two, three in Randolph County may have been just the exact opposite in another county. Three, two, one. Right. Yeah. You know, their highest level may have been a three where our highest level was a one. Correct. So, the emergency managers and the Indiana Department of Homeland Security got with legislatures and we modified the emergency management code and we basically now follow a system that follows the National Weather Service watch warnings um, and advisory levels. Trying to eliminate the confusion with all that. Mm -hmm. So at the lowest level is your white level, it's just normal traffic. Yeah. Advisory. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. Just the normal. Just normal level white. White, yeah. white. white is just your normal everyday traffic. Okay. Okay. Then you have the yellow, which is the advisory. Okay. Okay. And basically, what that means is, is it's starting like maybe right now with the snow that we've got falling right now, um, we could put out an advisory saying you know roads are starting to get slick. You know the road conditions are going to deteriorate rapidly here in a little bit. Yeah. So get your stuff done. Probably ought to get home. Um, some of the schools and businesses, they sh could start implementing safety plans and stuff like that, like the school's already doing with canceling events. Okay. You get into the orange level, and that is a watch, All a right. traffic watch. Basically what that means is is the, the conditions are, are bad. They could be somewhat life-threatening if you get stuck. Um, that we prefer you to start staying home if you can, and the schools and, and various businesses should be activating their plans. Okay. Um, the red level is the highest level. It is the warning level, and that basically means, unless you're uh, someone that's in emergency services or emergency management, um, you should be staying home. Now, there's a caveat with that because we cannot force businesses to close and stuff like that. Um, if businesses or 
someone that runs a shop or something like that says, you know, I'm not closing my shop and my employees have to come to work, we allow that uh, leeway for those businesses. Mm -hmm. And if the employees are told they have to go to work, then they should go to work. And, but they're not going to get ticketed for it. Right. So okay. the, the, the red level, we just basically, we're trying to get the roads cleared. Um, yeah. With that, maybe a disaster declaration, depending on what's going on. And um, so if the businesses are closing, then the employees should be staying home, and we really don't want people out. Yeah. With those, people need to kind of understand that uh, the, the travel stuff issued at the county level is for the unincorporated portions of the county, which means the rural. Mm -hmm. and we're not talking towns. We're not talking the cities. Um, each town, each city has their own unit of government. Uh, under Indiana's home rule laws, so they can set their own. Okay. Now, typically in Randolph County, everybody will tend to follow what the county issues. Correct. Um, sometimes Winchester will uh, stay one level below. You know, and, and that's not such a bad thing as long as there are people know that. Yeah. Um, because typically you're in town. Uh, each unit of government has their own plows and stuff, and, and they got a pretty good handle on that. And if, you know, you're less likely to get stuck in town as opposed to being out on the country road where it's been drifting for hours and then yeah. your car's abandoned and you were trying to walk somewhere. Right. So they don't apply to the towns, they don't apply to the cities, but like I said, they the units of government can follow those if they wish. Okay. Okay. Um, when it comes to like the watches and advisories in in the weather, I'll just stick with the winter because that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, travel advisories or uh, snow advisories. Yeah, winter weather. Advisory, right. Yeah. Those um, can be pushed out for weather like we have now. Um, it, there's not a time frame for those. Mm -hmm. it just like if we were to get a a sudden burst of snowfall that wasn't really predicted, then they could issue the advisory for that. Just saying the roads are getting slick. Yeah. The um, watches are issued to let everybody know that there's a significant storm that should be coming mm -hmm. along the way. And then the warnings are issued 12 to 36 hours out. And that way people can start making their plans for those and they know the storms are coming. And then they'll stay in effect until the, the threat's passed. Okay. So, yeah, when we, when we think of the watch, the warning, you know, advancing up when, we, when we're getting to that point where we're in the warning, mm -hmm. we're in the, in the, in the worst uh, conditions. So when we think of our travel advisories, uh, whether we're, we're given warning or if it's red level, right. um, we're, we're knowing that this is the worst condition it needs to be, that we need to stay home. We need to do the best we can to stay off the roads right. so that the plows can get out, so that um, ambulances, fire trucks, emergency personnel uh, can get to locations if there's somebody who needs uh, those emergency services in their home. Um, you know, uh, Lord forbid that, that someone has uh, an, a medical emergency and they're out like where I live out in the country and it's right. difficult to get uh, past a road, especially if it's impassable, they may need a plow, a snow plow ahead of right. them. Right. And if there's people um, that have been out traveling and they've had to abandon their cars, mm -hmm. there are consequences for for those who might who yes. might choose to travel during a, a red level and abandon their vehicles, right? right. Yes, uh, the, the the county's uh, emergency management ordinance allows if well, even state law allows this if the vehicles are abandoned and in the roadway they are towable. Okay. Um, and those are towed at the owner's expense, not the county's expense, and we're not reliable for any damage or anything that occurs with it. So. You know, depending, now you could think of worst case scenario if right. a drift goes over somebody's car and the plows come along and, and smashes into it, you've lost your car. Right. So, yeah. and then we're not we're not liable for it. Right. Um, so that's the big issue, and we're not trying to keep people home. We're not trying, you know, to cramp anybody's style. It's just that these snow events take some time to to clear. Randolph County has 482 square miles. Yeah. And we have. 15 plows right <laughs> it's yeah. going to take some time to clear the roads and get to the people okay and and i can guarantee you before the night's over we'll we'll be at a level where if we have ems calls or we have fire calls and they are out in the incorporated parts of the county or the real parts we'll use a snowplow to go with those people yeah. um, because 
we don't need the ambulances getting stuck. Right. And, and, and even then, there's no guarantee that that won't happen. It has happened before. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's the exact reason why we, we ask people to stay home. Yeah. It's just to keep the roads clear and so that the emergency services people can get from point A to point B without having to, to do a lot of um, rerouting. Yeah, and it's especially, um, you know, when we think about people out in the country, even myself, uh, people might groan and complain, gosh, where's that snow plow? He hasn't been on the road. Gosh, what you were just telling me, how many, 12 snow plows? 11? 11? Around 15. 15 mm -hmm. snow plows to get an entire county and all mm -hmm. those back roads and all those side roads, um, it's just, it takes a long time. And it it's, does. Yeah, and, and they've got to be thinking about uh, not running their snow plows off the road and, right. and damaging them, and they want to make sure that they're, that they're clearing the road properly, not just, not just barreling down, down it, but making sure that where salt needs to be laid, mm -hmm. um, that it's laid down, that they're not, uh, that just it's not causing damage to anyone else who's on the road. So, um, you know, get out of their way, let them do their job so they can clear it off for, for all of us so that we can get um, our school buses out, so that we can get to work uh, and all of that, that, and the county can get back to doing what they do. And I think it's, uh, it's important for people to hear what you said about um, if an employer uh, does choose to work during a level red emergency uh, a warning uh, travel advisory that you can't stop them. But that's something you probably want to talk to your employer about, is right. are you really expecting me to come in? Right. But of course, if you work in emergency management in some, in some way, um, emergency responders, um, that's kind of expected of you to right. make sure that, um, that we have you on staff. Maybe you're part of a nursing staff for emergency rooms, or if mm -hmm. you're part of uh, you know, just a business that really needs to be running, even, especially during those times. I think that, again, staying informed and ahead of the weather um, helps the county helps the county be safer um, and and in the right place in the right position so we're we're planning ahead for emergency preparedness which we'll talk ahead uh, in this in this program on how it is how it is I can be prepared in my home so we've talked about how you can be informed between Facebook the Nixel system uh, we uh, forgot to mention the county webpage go to Randolph right. County's webpage to uh, get all this information as well can they maybe contact you at the emergency management or is there a, a better uh, contact information for the county if you're just wanting to know what's going on um, it, it all depends on what we're doing okay. um, if if it's during normal working hours typically somebody's there we can answer the phones and then we can answer your your, uh, your questions and that's Monday through Friday, eight to four. Okay. Okay. Um, you get into the after hours, and, and if you're wanting to know information about travel advisories and stuff like that, best way to find it's on the internet. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that I would really like to stress is not calling the police departments or the sheriff's departments or nine one one. Yeah. And asking if you can get from Union City to Winchester, they don't have time for that. Yeah. Um, you can look that information up on the internet. You can look out your window and, and see the you know the roads are bad. Um, so we, I would really encourage you not to do that. Um, there are websites. Um, the, the Indiana Department of Transportation has websites set up that um, gives you the current road conditions um, and color codes, mm -hmm. uh, and each um, sub district reports those, so they are accurate. Um, you get in around Indianapolis and that metro area or up towards uh, Chicago and that metro area, there are plenty of uh, webcams for the, the interstates and stuff like that. So a lot of that's easier to find after hours on the, the Internet than yeah. it is, um, Colin. If yeah. some employer wants to know if we were under a certain level sure. um, because they had employees call in and, and they're wanting just to verify that, they can call the office and we'll give them that information because we keep track of when we issue those levels. Okay. Can we give out some contact information, email sure. address, or, or phone mm -hmm. numbers? To, yeah. Um, the, the office number is 765-584-9641. Uh, okay. Um, and then if you want the, the web address, uh, the easiest one to do is, I've got several, but the easiest one for general public to do would be just to do rcema 2 at gmail.com. That would be the easiest one. To okay. Do. We'll make sure they run on the bottom of the screen okay. so everyone can see that as well. So if uh, if it's really absolutely necessary to to contact you um, uh, via the email or uh, phone, 
mm -hmm. then they can use that. But don't swamp the county, uh, yeah, 911 or the right. police departments, uh, fire departments, emergency responders, because they've got a, a job to do too. Right. And, you know, and with the county webpage, they're in the process of revamping mm -hmm. the webpage to make it more mobile friendly. Okay. So um, I'm not sure exactly when that's going to roll out, but um, the, the, the website's being redeveloped so that it'll work specifically with cell phones, iPads, or any other type of pad device, and then uh, computers. Good. So, okay. it'll so be in VAMP. There's definitely no reason that we should not be a, an informed county and a safe county based on the information. Now, it doesn't mean we can't be prepared ahead of time. So, let's talk a little about emergency preparedness. Okay. We know weather events about to happen, uh, whether it be winter storm, um, thinking ahead even um, in the springtime, we have flash flood warnings, tornado warnings, things like that. But let's stick with winter uh, since that's where we are now. Okay. What are the different um, different things that I can do to keep my family uh, prepared for an event like this. Okay, well, I, you, when you think about this kind of a storm, everybody's already making them the grocery store runs. Right. Um, you're going to see bread disappear, you're going to see milk disappear, you're going to see... Eggs. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the main commodities are going to disappear. Mm -hmm. So stock up on those. Um, if we get into disaster situations, but nobody's saying that that'll, this will get to that point, but any any disaster situation, you basically want to have three days worth of water for each person in your house. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking at least a gallon per person per day. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, you might want to think about if, um, like southern Indiana is expected to get a half inch of ice over this storm. So they're yes. going to lose power. Right. Okay. And if they lose power and they lose a lot of lines, they're going to be without power for days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're low on your medications, stock up ahead of time if you can, even if it's, you know, um, asking the pharmacy to um, only give you half of, a, of your next prescription or something like that. But most pharmacies can deal to a certain degree with right. that. Um, have an extra food for your pets. And you also need yeah. to keep water in, in stock for your pets as well. Um, temperature is supposed to drop later tonight. It's supposed to get down into the negative digits. Not the double yeah. digits like it has been, but the negative singles. So mm -hmm. bring your pets inside because just because they have a fur coat doesn't mean that they're warm. Right. Um, keep extra food in your house, flashlights, batteries, some way of um, getting weather information, whether that's a, a rechargeable um, radio or it's a hand twist radio, okay, something yeah. along that lines. Um, if you lose power, you've got your car outside. Hopefully, you've got a car charger for your cell phones. Uh, charge your phone up that way mm -hmm. and um, keep those going. And, and just uh, plan ahead as much as you can with that. And it, it really should be okay for this type of event. Yeah, and I think people out in the country especially got to think about that um, heating aspect. Yes. Uh, you know, if I lose power, I'm not going to be able to run propane right. uh, or maybe a wood stove. So um, I think one of the... The, the things I've told people, if you have a backup generator, maybe it's a portable generator, not mm -hmm. one that's been, uh, you know, a 220 that's been integrated into the home, uh, maybe via a garage, detached garage, mm -hmm. is that, that you make sure that you understand where that exhaust is going. Right. Not into your home. Right, yeah. right, right. And you better make sure you got plenty of gas to run it, too, especially if you're talking for three days. Yeah. Um, you know, and the thing with that is, is, you know, a lot of the events, if, I mean, you consider our last... Um, significant ice storm that we had here in the county. We were without power for five days. Okay. So you you really need to plan for more than three. The the three day thing is kind of a uh, a FEMA catch, so that by the time it gets to that level, if we need supplies, if we need stuff from the state or federal government, that gives them time to get the supplies here. Okay. Doesn't yeah. mean necessarily that you're going to get dispersed that quickly, but yeah. Um, okay. So you we hope that everybody's self sufficient on their own for at least three. Yeah, keeping keeping some warm, uh, you know, air in the house. Maybe a, a kerosene heater of some sort mm -hmm. uh, that can run independently of power. Any of those right. other, um, you know, alternatives. Uh, trying to trying to keep yeah, that exhaust outside of your home if there's because that's carbon monoxide poisoning. Right. And, and I've heard of several incidents even during the 2005 ice storm mm -hmm. um, of people running generators in maybe an attached garage um, that wasn't ventilated well or in portions of their home. And you know it. It's uh, that carbon monoxide is such a silent killer, and, and right. you know you might be able to have uh, a TV running or a light working or some heat in your home, but you've got to deal with the consequences of that. So keeping it outside or in a well-ventilated area, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the doors open, so that that 
exhaust is is gone. In town, I think um, you know, looking up some friends, relatives, neighbors that might be able to bring you into their home if they they right. have power and you might not. Right. Uh, keeping informed on that, uh, taking care of your family, taking care of, of your neighbors around you because uh, we're all in this together when it right. comes down to it, right? You have to take care of your neighbors, especially the elderly, um, or if you know somebody that's sick and not doing well. Um, you know, go over and shove the little sidewalk for them. Um, not with the temperatures the way they are, don't know if it's going to be a heavy snow or if it's going to be more of a powder snow right now. But if you're getting up into my age, you know, where we're pushing close to 50, our hearts aren't the best anymore. So, you know, if you're going to go outside and shovel and the snow's heavy, take breaks, you know. Yeah. Um, don't wear yourself out and, and then cause, you know, yourself to have a heart attack. And, and keep your eye on your neighbors and stuff like that because we are in this together. I even uh, remember some of the alerts coming down that was talking about how little of time you need to be spending outside, especially when the when we were getting to the double digits, right. uh, negative double digits, mm -hmm. of how cold it was, breathing in that cold air. Mm -hmm. You might be well bundled up, but you're breathing it in, and, mm -hmm. and you know that cold air is getting into your lungs. That's not good for you. Uh, your fingers will get frostbitten working outside. Quickly. Mm -hmm. quickly yeah mm -hmm. it doesn't take long so don't spend too much time outside so I think all of these tips and tricks and uh, the information is important for all of the members of our county we're down to the last uh, couple of minutes any last words that you might want to uh, give the public um, you know just last tips or advice uh, that you want to give them well if, if they're wanting to look for preparedness information there's a couple of different places they can go uh, the one's a federal website and it's called ready.gov Right. Um, yeah. And that deals with most of the U.S.'s natural disasters and storms and stuff like that. And it tells people how to prepare um, kits for each person in the house, um, whether it's somebody with special needs, um, for your pets, um, for people that may have um, hearing difficulties or something along that line. And then there is one on the Indiana Department of Homeland Security website, which is in.gov slash DHS. Um, and then you just have to look for the preparedness hyperlink. But th that website, to me, is a little more user-friendly than the, the uh, ready.gov one. Um, and it has uh, information relating to all of Indiana's natural events and, and yeah. man-made events. Um, so there's you know severe thunderstorm events. There's, there's uh, fire safety and winter safety flooding safety and that kind of stuff so those and those are a nice little 8 by 11 sheets so it's easy to uh, print off if you want to do that even yeah and have a, that that uh, those emergency numbers may be printed out next to the phone mm -hmm. you know these are the numbers I call if I need this even thinking about uh, you know uh, poison control even you know yeah. having that number next to the phone is always a good idea Chris it's been good having you on here appreciate uh, it yeah we appreciate what you do for the county and uh, and and what you're going to continue doing in the days ahead so yes. thank you for being here today and thank you for watching today again make sure that you are staying informed that you're looking at Facebook especially and, the, and, and subscribing to the Nixle system getting these weather alerts in your home, on your phone, however it is you can get it to keep you and your family informed. Stay warm out there. Be safe. Uh, make sure you're checking out uh, also KISS TV, our website, KISSTV5.com, and on our Facebook page. We share all this information out there. If you go to KISSTV.com forward slash Union City information or just Union City, uh, you can find all of these web pages we've talked about today and email addresses, phone numbers, what have you. So for me, Nick Poling, this has been Cable Chatter. Have a great day.